Jess, take it away. In Hadara, it's your chance to make history. Over three epochs guide the growth of your civilization as new ideas emerge. Take great strides forward in the many fields of human achievement to build an empire more glorious than any other. Skilled artisans, philosophers, warriors, and architects from various cultures bring their genius to aid you in your endeavors. But it rests with you to choose the best citizens to build your strength and prestige. Yep, yeah. there's the only theme you're going to hear about all <laughs> night right there. Okay, so what are you guys looking at to begin with? Well, obviously we have the main board out here. There are five segments with matching colored first epic or epoch cards. I'll probably use those turns interchangeably. Um, and there are two per player. So the five colors here, we have green, which is food. We have yellow, which is income. We have blue, which is culture. We have red, obviously military, and then purple. Rule breakers, think of them that way, okay? That's essentially what they are. Then there is a rotating wheel with player symbols here in the middle. It plays up to five players. Obviously, we are only playing four players tonight, so only four of the symbols are going to come into play here. Then down below that, we have colony tiles. These will go in increasing cost of military cost as well, down here in the bottom left-hand corner. More on those in a bit. Then, kind of off-board, if you will, we have the bank, which is up top. And then we have 10 value markers for player tracks. And then off-board, we have the second and third epic cards that will come into play for, wait for it, the second and third epochs or epics. Over here on our player tableaus, uh, we have the player board. These are all symmetric player boards. And there are track markers for the four different types of resources that I mentioned earlier. Then, over here on the left-hand side, we have the colony prerequisites in military level. Then down below that, we have statue spaces with culture prerequisite levels on those. Then on the top up here, we have silver metal spaces, and then we have gold metal spaces as well, and in the top right, we have our player icons themselves. Then there are bonus tiles, which there's going to be two per player, but this is just for the example so you guys can see it zoomed in, so trust me, there are two per player. Then there is each other's starting money, and then everybody is going to start with two gold medals, like so, but those honestly can be over in the supply, because as you acquire them, you can just place them onto your board. Then everybody player was randomly or every player was randomly dealt a setup card. And this gives asymmetric starting values on each of the tracks, as well as determining the starting player for each of the three epochs, unless you're player four, in which you will not be the starting player in any of the epochs. And everybody has a player aid that is going to be double sided. Believe it or not, that actually matters, that extra little bit of info there on the back. <laughs> so that's pretty much everything that you're looking at here. Now we are playing the quote unquote advanced rules, which means there are advanced cards, which are some of the purple cards in the game because we're heavy cardboard and honestly, they don't add much complexity uh, to the game itself, all right? Now, how do you actually play Hadara? Well, Hadara is played over three epochs, with each epoch separated into two phases. In the first phase, each player is going to draw cards from a different deck of cards, and that's going to be based upon where the wheel on the board is until each player has drawn from each of the five decks. Then in the second phase, players are going to be choosing from the cards in the discard piles one at a time until there are no cards left on the board. The cards that players choose during both phases are going to allow them to increase their income, claim colonies, complete statues, feed their population, and collect points. Or, you know, move up these tracks. That's what we're going to be doing to ultimately gain victory points. After three epochs, again, three, there's going to be final scoring. Whoever has the most victory points wins. All right, so how do you play the game? Here we go. Phase A. The player with the lowest initiative value on their setup card is going to be the first player in the first epoch. Then who's ever got the number two card is going to be the first player in the second epoch. 
so on and so forth, right? Any player who doesn't, who's not going to be the uh, first player during the game receives one extra coin at the beginning of the first epoch only. Hence why I'll have an extra dollar here, because four, three epochs. Okay, easy enough. The first player for the, of the first epoch and of each succeeding epoch is going to set the wheel to where it lines up. You know, there's little lines right here, basically to where one of the symbols is going to look uh, match plate. It's going to point at one of the different decks of cards, words. Then simultaneously, all players are going to draw the top two cards from the deck that matches their player icon. So with me being the dragon, I would draw the top two cards off the green deck, okay? Then choose one of the two drawn cards to discard face up to the matching discard pile, okay? So the yellow cards into the yellow area, red into the red, etc., etc. With the remaining card, the player now has a choice. They can either buy the card or sell the card. Before we go into all of that, though, let's go ahead and go over the anatomy of a card itself, okay? So on the face of the card, taking a look at it here, so we have in the middle right here, it has the color of the card, so it's a green card plus the background matches it, easy enough to tell, and it shows what epoch it's out of, so epoch one, two, or three, okay? Then... The cost to purchase the card is down here in the bottom left. So out of the available money that you have, you must spend to the bank that amount of money to be able to buy the card. The value added to your civilization is whatever is up here at the top. So in this case, this would add one uh, income and two food to my civilization. What does that mean? It looks like this. One and two. Easy enough. Okay, if I were to purchase the card. The victory points that you will score at the end of the game is on the bottom, hand, bottom right hand side. And then the purple cards are a bit of an odd duck. These are kind of rule breakers. And as those come out, we'll go ahead and go over the details of all the purple cards. But again, first epoch costs four bucks. It's going to be worth one point and does some sort of special ability for whatever it does. All right, that's the anatomy of the f uh, back of a card on that or on the front of the card, I guess. On the back of the card, when we get into selling the card, it says how much you're going to sell the card for. Easy enough. OK, so let's go ahead. I told you you're going to take two cards off the top for whatever symbol is matching or where whatever deck is matching your sim or pointing at your sim your symbols pointing at the deck of the cards. Oh, my Lord, it shouldn't <laughs> be this hard. I am the dragon. Hear me roar. <laughs> I draw the top two cards. Out of those two cards, I choose one to put into the discard pile. The other one, I either buy it or sell it. So what does buying and selling look like? Well, if I choose to buy the card, I'm going to pay the cost in coins back to the bank. So this is the card that I chose to not discard. So now I have a choice. I look at the card. Obviously, I will have chosen a second card as well. So out of these, one of these I'm going to put into the discard, and I'll give an example of that like that, and I choose to be able to make a decision out of this one, buy or sell. So if I'm going to buy it, I pay three bucks from this to the bank. Then, after that, you go ahead and place it to the bottom of your player tableau so that the top symbols remain for any other cards. So for instance, if this was already in my tableau, I would stack it like so, easy enough, right? and you move it to the right, whatever it shows. Mm -hmm. So whatever tracks it shows. I also should point out one really important thing. If I already had this card here, each, you pay one less to a minimum of zero for each matching color card already in your tableau. So if this card were already in my tableau, instead of costing three dinero, this would cost two dinero, down to a minimum of zero. So if I had three green cards already here, this would be free. I place it down here. I move up the tracks. Pretty simple there, right? Yep. Okay, that's buying a card. If I chose instead to sell the card, I discard the card out of the game and take from the money two, three, or four bucks, depending on which epoch it is. All the epoch one cards say it's one dollar. 
or I'm sorry, says it's two, all Epoch 2 say it's three, et cetera, et cetera. Easy enough. Do whatever it says. And this is out of the game forever, or at least until the next time you play. Okay, that's buying and selling. Okay, then getting back to our example, we had discarded that card. Then after everyone has done that simultaneously, we then rotate the wheel one to the right, clockwise. I draw two cards from here. Choose one to discard, one to buy or sell. We do that until every player has drawn from all five decks, okay? That's the majority of phase A. Mm -hmm. Then each player is going to gain income based upon where their coin track is. So if their income track is at six, they will get six bucks, easy enough. Then starting with the first player of the epoch and proceeding clockwise, play, players then can claim one colony tile only. The cost of a colony tile is a prerequisite. You actually do not spend the military. You must have three, nine, 15, 21, or 30 military respectively to be able to claim a colony tile. So for instance, looking at one of the colony tiles, let's say I had a military of nine. I could choose either the three value colony tile or the nine value colony tile. If I've already chosen one of those on a previous turn, I cannot choose another. Okay, you cannot have two of the same value in a bottom left hand corner. That is why there is one per player in each stack. So if you don't claim it, you don't claim it. Nobody else can gain two of the same prerequisite. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. And again, you do not lose the military. So let's say I chose the three military one. I don't pay any military. I just, hey, I qualify for it. Good to go. Okay. You may take these in any order. So I could have chosen the nine value one first before I chose the three value one if I wanted. Okay. But now if you take one, you place it to the left side of your player board, but now you have to make a choice. You either plunder or you integrate. If you plunder, you get however money is shown on the left hand side and you do not flip this tile. You do not look at the back side of this tile. Do not cheat, Jess. Okay? <laughs> so, in other words, this is a what you plundered the colony, you took it for money, and that's it, and it'll be worth that amount of victory points at the end of the game. However, if you are more of a friendly type and thinking long term, you can choose to integrate the tile, and you will then pay whatever is in red there, and then you get to do exactly what it shows, which is flip it over. If you flip it over, you will gain that many victory points at the end of the game, and you bump up that tr whatever tracks it shows. Easy enough. But it will not give you the money because you didn't plunder it. Instead, you assimilated or you integrated the tile. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay? Pretty easy for Colony. So, again, we're going to take in Phase A, we're going to draw... Two cards for each, go through all that. We're gonna get our income, then players may choose to take one of the colony tiles. And I should point out, you never lose a colony if for whatever reason your military drops down for whatever reason, you claimed it, you're good to go, you keep it. Then, again, with the first player of the epoch and proceeding clockwise, players may then also carve one statue as long as they have the minimum requirements of culture. Notice the culture requirements, 6, 12, 20, and 30, respectively. Yes, the track only goes up to 10. More on that here in a little bit. Again, you do not lose that amount of culture. You just must qualify for it, just like the military. If a player chooses to carve a statue, you're limited to one, just like in colonies. You choose one of their unused bonus tiles and then places it into the empty space of the statue and immediately gains on that track the shown amount next to the statue. So maybe I choose to put that there. Hey, I immediately gain two on my military. Easy enough, right? If, however, I was at, say, nine, then what happens is you would go to 11. This thing goes up to 11. So you add one of the little plus 10 markers, and you move it back to one, and yes, you can add these on so you can go above 30 if you wanted, okay? You can keep on going. So you have the four tracks here, or 
if you wish, you could flip it over. And then that will score that many bonus victory points at the end of the game, in addition to whatever victory points are shown above this statue. Okay? And again, you never lose the statue if you drop below in culture, etc., etc. That's phase A. Any questions on phase A? Nope. Mm -mm. All right. Phase B, then, is similar but different. Starting with the first player of the epoch, proceeding clockwise, players then must choose. There will be none of these cards left out here. There will just be a bunch of discards out here face up into the various areas. At that point, the symbols don't matter. You must choose one of the five face up cards of the discard piles. And then you have a choice. You either sell it out of the game or you buy it and put it into your tableau, following the exact same rules as we went over earlier, until all those cards are gone doing that one at a time. Okay? It's important to note, you cannot go through the deck. You look at the top. You choose the top or the top or the top or the top or the top, and that's it. Okay? And you choose to either buy it or sell it. Selling's out of the game. Okay? Continue until there are no cards left on the board. So this stack will have em emptied at the end of phase A. This stack or all these stacks would have emptied at the end of phase B. Then, just like in phase A, we're going to take our income. You may take a colony. You may carve a statue. But then, alas, there is one other little thing, a la Uwe Rosenberg. So what does that mean? That means you have to feed your peeps. So, the food track is equal to, if it's equal to or greater than the number of cards in your tableau, it's at three, one, two, three, I'm good to go, don't worry about it. However, if my food track was only at, say, two, because it shows two there, then I have to discard cards from my tableau until I get down to that number. So. Here's the kicker. You discard the card, you're not selling it, you don't get the money that's on the back. Sorry, you should plan better. Also, if you discard the card, your tracks go down. And now, well, if I chose poorly, I have to lose all my cards because I have no food. Don't let that happen to you. Don't be foodless. But you discard down until that matches. So realistically, maybe I discard one of these. I'm at two cards, I'm at two food, I'm good to go. Any questions on that? Nope. nope. All right. Then after that, then you can buy metals. You can buy any mix of metals. You were allowed a total of two silver and two gold metals. You might be asking yourself, self, how much do metals cost? Well, that's an excellent question. Depends what epoch we're in. Here, it says if we're in the first epoch, silver costs four, gold costs six, and then go up in increasing value each epoch. You also might be asking yourself, self, what do they do? Why do I want these metals? Well, good thing you asked. Well, <laughs> first off, if it's a silver metal, you're going to place a bonus tile, just like what you had done with the statues. Okay? More on that here moments. Well, actually, let's go and talk about it now. Let's say I place this here. At, the, at game end, you're going to score victory points equal to half the value of the track rounded up. So let's say... We're at 17 income at the end of the game. What's half that rounded up? That'd be nine. Score nine points at the end of the game. Easy enough for that silver medal. Okay? You can have two of them. If you don't have another income one, you can, because you do actually have two of them. You could do this, but that means you're not using them down here for statues and vice versa. Okay? Because you're limited to two each. Here, however, you cannot use the victory point side. Alas. The gold medals or as I like to call them, the uh, Jess abuses these. <laughs> these are points at the end of the game for sets of cards for all five colors. So again, the cost, you pay it, you place a gold medal out here, like so. And then at the end of the game, for each complete set of cards that you have in your tableau, complete set meaning a yellow, red, blue, green, and purple card, you score seven points. If you have five sets, that's 35 points. If you have both medals, that's 70 points. Clear? We good? Bueno? Yeah. All right, cool. All right. 
After that, you set up the board for Epoch 2 or Epoch 3, depending respectively, and do it all over again. And you're going to have two cards per player out here. So the greens would go in the green, etc., etc. Do that three times. Then we go into final scoring. What's final scoring? The victory points for all of your colonies. So if I have, say, that one if it were like this, I would score a total of 15 points. And yes, there is a handy dandy little score pad. So score victory points at the bottom of all your colonies. You're going to score victory points uh, for all of your statues. So if I had all four statues, that would be a total of 30, 40, 48 points, 49, 50 points, because two times one, right? There you go. So all those are cumulative. Then silver medals are going to score, gold medals are going to score, victory points for the bottoms of each of your cards, whatever it shows in there, and five coins equals one victory point, whoever has the most points wins. If tied, whoever has the most leftover coins wins. If still tied, it's a shared vid victory. The last thing that I would like to point out, and because I don't want to go over them all, all the purple card effects are on the back of the player or back of the rule book so if you have any questions we can just refer to that any questions good let's play <laughs> <laughs> all right let me reset this up and i forgot what i used out here so hold on three four five six seven and that's that eight yep. there and we need to shuffle these up because i know jess has already gone through them so. i did not i just put them the right way okay but so shuffle those up if you would please <laughs> I don't remember them at all and all right that's what i do well, so any questions locally? All right, sure cool. Oh, no. that was upside down. So all the ones go Good out. thing we checked. There. Nope, that's oh. upside down. <laughs> 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 and those are upside down. <laughs> Gotta make sure they're facing this way. There we go. Yeah, I didn't realize I that when I was off. putting them down. I was just like, I'll just put them. Yep. Yeah, you want to make sure you can't see that because you're making that choice before you know what it offers you on the other side. And no, even after we're done with the game, if you chose to conquer a colony and not integrate it, you will never know. You are not allowed to look at the end of the game. That mystery will go on forever. So you're ever. getting money Amen. if you integrate it, but you're paying money to... to Correct, conquer. but you're getting a long-term benefit out mm -hmm. of it as well, right? Mm -hmm. So there we go. Mm -hmm. So if the back on the cheat sheet is how much each... Oh, the glare is impossible. That's how the range... The, the, wow, sorry about that. Gotcha. There we go. Yep. Range of costs okay. of each card. Yeah, there each you go. Epoch, what you're selling it for. No, no this no, no, is no, the no. cost right. of the card. Oh, that's the cost. Selling right. will be two, two, three, oh, yeah, three four dollars. Two, okay. three, four. Actually, yeah. it's it's interesting that they didn't put that anywhere, but I guess they did on the back of the card. On the back of the, the cards, card. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So oh. place your bets over under on number of glory to roams. Also, I'm gonna set the over under on two and a half. I think mm -hmm. this okay. is going to be relatively innocuous. Camera's back up. Um, I feel like there's not too much we can do oh to yeah. each other. All right, so I need to set mine up. So I get nine coins, but I get one extra because I um I do not. So it explains that in the rule book. However, it's integrated on the card itself. Yes. Notice everybody else gets eight coins, except player four and player five will get nine coins. Yes. That's implied. So I'm at two, I'm at one, I'm at two, and I'm, wow, five. Five. Okay, cool.